So next up, we're going to deep dive into the collection because this is a big part of Rekordbox and you're going to be spending a lot of time organizing your tracks and getting them ready to then put into playlists. Now we touched on this before about how we can customize these columns by dragging them around. But there's a whole lot more that we can do with these columns. For example, if I right click on these columns, I can actually see that I have a whole load of other columns that I can add in. And I can also remove any that I don't want. For example, I might not need that album column. I don't tend to use that generally. So I can actually uncheck that and it removes that column. So if I don't, if I'm not keen on that column, I can get rid of it. Now, I don't tend to look at the BPM very often, to be honest, because most of the tracks that I add, I just don't need the BPM for. So I can right click again and I can remove the BPM column. And the same thing goes for the rating. I don't tend to use the rating all that much, but you can, of course, do if you want to. And then we can also right click on here and add in some columns that might be really, really useful. For example, the my tag column. Now we're going to come on to this a little bit later, but I'm going to add it now just so we got it ready for a bit later. And then also we can add in the DJ play count. Now this becomes really handy because every time you play a track out using the Pioneer equipment, this will automatically log how many times you've played a track. So if you're looking for a track that you play all the time, you've played it many, many times, then you can use the DJ play count. It becomes really, really handy. And as I mentioned before, we added all of these tracks on the same day. So at the moment, they're sorted by date added, which it's not really helping us too much because they're all added on exactly the same day. But what we can do is right click on here and add in release date. So this will then take the information from the track and show us the release date for it. So we can see within here, some of these have got release dates, some of them haven't, but we can still order it by the release date if we want to. As I mentioned before as well, you can drag these columns and move them around however you want to. So maybe you want the release date near to where the date added is. You can also resize the columns quite easy just by dragging the right hand side. Just make things how you want them to be. So you actually just see the information that you want. Now we've just added the DJ play count and the my tag there, but it's pushed the artist away from the track title. So I'm just gonna move the track title back over here again. As you can see, it makes it very easy to just customize this to how you want. It's very easy just to drag these around and really make it something that makes sense to you. Now, if I sort by artist, we can see here that there's a couple of entries without artists in. This is because the information that's stored within the MP3 isn't quite correct. So we don't actually have anything in the artist field, but we can see within the track title, we actually have the artist name within there. So what we need to do is we need to get this artist name into the artist column. Now there's a couple of ways we can go about doing this. You can actually edit any of the information just by clicking into one of the cells here. So I can just click into this cell here. So I can actually enter in the artist name now. As you can see, it also auto completes. It looks through all the tracks you've already got in your collection. And if there's already a track in there by that artist, it allows you to automatically fill it in. Just saves you that little bit of time. And because I've just entered the artist name in and we're sorting by artist, it's actually jumped all the way down here again now. Now, obviously we have the artist name in both the artist and the track title, which is not gonna be good. So I'm gonna click on the track title. And this goes into edit mode. And what I can do now is I can actually get rid of, so there's some information at the end here that I don't need. So I can actually just delete that out. And I can also delete the artist name here. And we're just tidying things up. You can go through and tidy your whole collection up. So if you have a whole load of MP3s that don't have the right information with them, you can go through and you can edit them quite easily. Now, if you're liking this course and always wanted to make your own DJ edits, bootlegs and remixes for your sets, then you might be interested in another course that I've done. I've got a complete beginner's guide to Ableton aimed at DJs wanting to make their own edits. I'll teach you Ableton from scratch and I'll teach you just the skills that you need to know when you need to know them so you're not overwhelmed by it all. I've had some amazing reviews from over 400 students that have already taken the course. Check out the link at the top of this video or in the description for more information. Now, if I scroll back to the top again, we have another track here that doesn't have an artist in there. And this is where I'm going to show you how to do the second method of being able to edit a track. Now, as I say, you can click into any of the columns and edit the information there. But there's also a tab here on the right hand side. This shows information about the track. So once I've got the track selected within here, if I hit this info tab, I can see all the information about that track, but I can go to the info tab and now I can start editing these fields from within here. So we can see in this info that we actually have the artist name at the start of this track title. So I'm gonna put the artist name in here. 
And then I'll click into the track title and I'm going to remove it from the start of the track title. And I'm also going to get rid of this information here. And this automatically saves and updates. You can see it automatically updating within there. But we also have a whole load of other information within here. We've got album, album artist, comments, a whole load of different things. So we can actually fill out all of this within here if we wanted to. And we could also add the column that relates to this information if we wanted to within here. Also, if you're a visual person and like to see the actual cover work of tracks that you play, then you can actually go to the artwork section and add an image in there if you have it. And then to hide this information, I just click on that button again. Now, as I mentioned before, when we were finding tracks for our playlist, you have the search box up here to be able to find whatever you want. Now, by default, this will search through whatever info is on the track. So it might be in the track title, it might be in the artist, it might be in the comments, it might be anywhere within that information. But we can also narrow this down. If I wanted to just search by track title, for example, I can narrow it down from here. Or maybe if I want to search by artist. So as you can see, it's very, very powerful. And I can just hit this X mark at the right just to clear that. Now, one really useful tip is that you can actually add extra information in the comments of a track. So say, for example, with this track here, I could go to the information here and I could go into the info and I could put a comment in the comments field. For example, I could put in awesome, for example. Now, if I close that down and if I did a search for awesome. And I'm going to search by everything that track will now show up. So if you have an idea of how you can actually categorize your tracks, or you might have a certain keyword that you want to put in there, you could put the keyword into your comments and then search by that. It works really, really well. Now, by default, the collection actually looks like this, but there is another view. We can actually switch over to the other view, which gives you a little bit more of the artwork and a little bit more information. Obviously, you can't fit as many tracks on the screen, but it certainly is a different way of looking at it. It's totally up to you which one you like the most, and you can obviously experiment with both. I prefer the smaller one where I can fit more tracks on the screen. Next up, we have the filters. Now we have the category filter, which allows us to filter our tracks by genre, artist or album. So say, for example, I can look through here and maybe find all tracks by Antler Rock and it will show me them. If I scroll back to the top again, I can go back to all and maybe I could actually filter by genre this time. So maybe by Deep House and you can use multiple filters as well. So maybe you want to filter by genre and then by artist. And you can reset this just by going back to all on each one of those. There is also a second way to filter as well that opens up even more options. So we can search by BPM or by key or maybe by rating, color, genre, component, situation. There's just so much going on within here. Now, these last bits are the tag section, and I'll come on to that a bit later and it will make a whole load more sense. You can also set tracks with different colors. So maybe you might put a certain genre as one color and another genre as another color. It's totally up to you how you want to use it. Maybe you want to find all the tracks in a certain key, maybe everyone in F minor. The filtering becomes more and more powerful with the more information that you add. So if you categorize tracks by color or by using the tags, then this becomes even more useful. And to hide these filters again, you just hit the button. And finally, if you find yourself working in collection mode quite a bit and you want to see even more tracks, you can actually go up to the top left hand corner here and select full browser. This allows you to see even more on screen if you really want to get into full organization mode. And if you want to get the player back, you can easily just select one player again. <laughs> 